Hey everyone, Daryl here from the Victory 4x4 Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to install our strike bumper and adventure swing on the 5th gen Toyota 4Runner. Pretty great install, can't wait to show it to you. I do have to warn you, I have a bit of a cold, so if I'm chomping on a cough drop throughout the video, I don't mean to be rude, I'm just trying to continue talking to you. So let's get started. Now to do this, we actually have to cut the factory bumper plastic here on the lines that I've laid out. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you take your time, it should be no problem at all. And the reason we chose to do that is because if we didn't, you'd have to remove it and we'd have to make panels to fill all this in. It never really looks great. So it's going to look a lot better if we cut right here and it will flow perfectly into our bumper. Now to cut this, all you're going to need is either a cutoff wheel or a sawzall or a body saw, whatever you have available. Just take your time, make sure you lay your tape out straight, you'll have great results. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove this mud flap. And that happens with a bolt up here, a bolt on the inside, two clips, and a bolt from the bottom. Go ahead and pull this mud flap on both sides and we can mark the line for our cut. So on the sides here, we're going to lay this tape line down five inches from this body line. Five inches right here and five inches right here. You can make a mark on there and then use the tape as a straight edge or you can use like one of those cheap laser levels that you can get from a home store. But all you're really worried about is that you measure down five inches from here, five inches from here, and that this line is straight all the way around here. On the rear corner here, we're going to measure up two and a quarter from this seam down here, two and a quarter. And then you're gonna have a nice straight line all the way around the side here. Now for the inside, you wanna make sure this line is just straight parallel with the vehicle. Now we're gonna do this line here, and to do that, we're gonna measure a quarter inch off from this radius here. We're gonna match this radius as it goes along this step portion of the bumper. And then where we lose this radius, we're gonna go ahead and just go straight and straight up to our other line. Using tape in this really makes a nice uh, line. You can use a marker. This is called 3M fine line tape. It's really handy for laying out stuff like this. All right, now we can cut this. And if you're careful, you can cut it with the bumper on, but make sure your cutting tool doesn't go much deeper than a half inch or so, or you'll start to get into sheet metal. If you're worried about that, go ahead and pull the bumper off. There's these bolts here. There's some screws up on top here. There's some clips, pull the inner fenders. You can pull everything apart, but it'll save you a lot of time if you just cut on here and are super careful. I'm gonna cut this with a four inch cutoff wheel just cause it's kind of easy to get a nice straight edge. If you don't have one of these, you can use a sawzall, you can use a handsaw, you can use anything. It'll cut really easily. I just find that this allows me to make the straightest cut as I go across. Now once you get that cut done, there's going to be two bolts on the bottom here we have to remove with a 10 millimeter socket or end wrench. Then the bumper should be free. All right, once that cut is all done, you can go ahead and pull your tape and then clean up your edge. You can do that with like a four inch sanding disc or with a piece of sandpaper on a block, whatever you have that's easiest for you. All right, as you can tell from my beard growth and my choice of attire, it's hoodie season now and some time has passed. Uh, we showed you how to cut on the gray forerunner, but now we're gonna show you how to install it on this forerunner. Let's get started. All right, if your forerunner has a receiver hitch, you're going to remove that now. We're going to do that with a 17 millimeter socket or end wrench. And all we have to do is remove these four bolts right here. Um, and also all we have to do is remove the two bolts underneath. Now we're going to remove this factory tow hook with the same 17 millimeter socket wrench. We don't really plan on getting stuck again, so we, we don't need it. Actually, our bumper has steering tabs. 
way better than a tow hook. So now's the time to install your reverse lights or your scene lights, whatever you want to call these. Uh, you cannot do it when the bumper is on. So I would pick a good quality light now because if this breaks, you're going to have to pull the whole bumper to replace it. Now there's lots of adjustability in these. These are your standard three inch by three inch cube light. And typically on the standard sizes, there's lots of adjustability in the mounts on heights and stuff. So you'll want to play with that while the bumper is off, get everything lined up really well. Just so you don't have to mess with it while the bumper is on. Now this step is totally optional, but I like to paint this body color section underneath the bumper. So it just kind of hides behind the bumper. So any black, semi-gloss black paint will work great. Uh, clean it off, and then we'll just spray one quick coat on here just so this hides once the bumper is installed. If you're going to install the tire carriers now, it's easier to install these little latch brackets with the bumper on the ground. So install either one or both. You can install them later, it's just a little more difficult. So grab these quarter inch by one bolts and those are going to slide through the bracket and the face of the bumper. The opening on the bracket is going to face outwards towards the sides of the bumper. And then grab a quarter inch flange nut and go ahead and put that on the inside of the bumper on the top and on the bottom. And then you can tighten this bracket down with a 7 16th inch end wrench and a 7 16th inch socket wrench. Now at the end of this bracket, there's gonna be a little stainless steel quarter inch button head bolt and a quarter inch flange nut. And this is just for the latch to push against so it's not pushing against the uh, finish. And once you get that nut started, you can tighten this down with a 5 30 seconds hex head. You're going to want to make sure that this bolt and that these bolts don't come loose. So if you have to use some red Loctite, do that at this time, because if those come loose, then your tire carrier could come open. So those being tight is important. A quick word on these spacers before we bolt this bumper on. We're going to provide them with all of our bumpers, and the majority of foreigners are going to need these spacers. They go right here. So they sandwich between the bumper mount and the frame. If you find your bumpers uh, not sitting properly, like maybe it's sitting a little downwards when you look at it from the side, you can pull these spacers out and just bolt it on without any problems without them. But most forerunners will need these spacers. Now we need to remove this rubber exhaust isolator. These can kind of be a bear, but there's a trick to them. Grab some lubricant, some WD-40, penetrating oil, whatever you have, and just try to spray it inside of the two holes here where the uh, frame side mount goes through. Then after you spray that, let that sit a second. And then from the back, you'll probably have to grab two pry bars or two big screwdrivers to leverage off each other. And then just kind of work that off. However, it comes off the easiest. And then once you get it started off, you can usually Push it the rest of the way with your hands. There you are. And just let that hang for now. All right, now with a friend or someone who you pay with beer and pizza, we're going to go ahead and lift this bumper on. And it's, uh, we'll kind of talk through it as we, as we go. So we need to get this portion here between this piece of frame or body and the exhaust. So Take some finagling on this side. You can push the exhaust down if you need to. And this customer's exhaust is not stock, so that makes it a little more difficult. Okay, and then once you get here, we're gonna provide you some new fine thread metric bolts for, get lift up a little bit, for the hitch section here. So just start those loose. And 
And then once you have it there, you can let it hang, and then we can work on the bottom. All right, once you get this bumper kind of into position, you gotta kind of finagle it here. And what you're trying to do is get this plastic piece on your, uh, the back of your Forerunner underneath the lip here on the top of the bumper. And also there's a little cutout right here for this bumper to slide over this plastic piece here as well. So kind of get it in the right area and tighten this bottom bolt or just loosely install this bottom bolt just to hold it. And then we'll go underneath and we'll put the bottom bolts in. Then we can rework this area once that's done. Now we're going to provide you all new bolts for underneath here and it'll look the same on each side. We're going to do a 12 millimeter fine thread bolt and washer. Two of them will go here like this. And then the front three bolts will provide you these guys, these flange head bolts, remember. You'll most likely have to use that little spacer under here, but you can try it without if the bumper is not sitting correctly. And these you might have to move the bumper just a little bit to align. So I recommend starting these all finger tight right now and then going back later and tighten them up. And I'd actually do that on both sides. I'd install them all on both sides finger tight and then go back. And there's one more bolt. We're going to slide up through here, through the chain hanger. And then there is a hole in here. So that's another 12 millimeter fine thread bolt and a washer that we'll provide for you. So go ahead and repeat that process finger tight on the other side. On these front bolts, if you're finding that the slots aren't lining up, what you can do is make sure that those bolts in the back uh, above the hitch are loosened up. And then you can pull back or stick a pry bar in here and pry back. And you can move this bumper around a little bit just to get these started. And it makes it a lot easier if all the bolts are loose when you do that. When all the bolts are finger tight and you're ready, you can go ahead and tighten them up. These small ones will use a 12 millimeter socket and these larger ones will use a 19 millimeter socket. A quick word of caution. I noticed why I was tightening this up that the threads felt a little bad in the frame. So if you have that same problem, don't try to push through that. You'll just break this off and cause a bunch of trouble. Just grab an M8 one and a quarter tap. I'm sorry, M8 1.25 tap, uh, M8 1.25 and just chase those threads. And then you should have no problem sending that bolt through and tightening it down. Just make sure you do that. It's way better to run to the store and grab this tap than it is to break a bolt off in the frame. Trust me. All right, now that we have all the bolts snugged up and installed, we can go ahead and torque them. The M8s, the smaller ones, we're gonna to torque to 20 to 25 foot-pounds. Uh, the larger M12, we're gonna to torque to 60 foot-pounds. So just go ahead and walk around and torque all of them. And the, the larger ones, that includes the two underneath the hitch and the four above the hitch, the two on each side. The smaller ones here will be the three in the front of this bracket. The last thing we need to do while we're under here is go ahead and put this rubber exhaust isolator back on. Another quick spray of WD-40 will make your life easier and you can just squeeze it on by hand. Good to go. Now once all these bolts are torqued we can install this cover plate here and we're going to do that with four stainless steel quarter inch bolts and I would recommend just a dab of anti-seize on the threads of these stainless bolts. That'll make it easier to get these off in the future. And uh, good luck getting anti-seize on the bolt without getting it all over your hands, face, the whole inside of your house. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down with a 3 16th hex. Just snug the first one and then apply some more anti-seize to the rest of them.
All right, if you're not installing a swing out at this time, we give you these little plastic caps to cover the top and the bottom of the spindle. And that just keeps junk out of them. It keeps rust out of there uh, until you're ready to install a swing. And what I'd like to do on these is put a little RTV, just a bead around the cap so it keeps moisture all the way out. If you just pop the caps in there, they'll stay, but they won't be as waterproof as we like. So it's gonna kind of make a little bit of a mess, but RTV on there, and then just push the cap in the top, and then grab a rag and wipe that RTV off, and then do the same thing underneath. Okay, so if you're not installing tire carriers at this time, go ahead and install a cap on this side as well, top and the bottom, and you're done. That's all set. You are dismissed. But if you are installing a tire swing right now, you're going to go ahead and grab this spindle here. And I would recommend putting some anti-seize on this portion that slides into the bumper. That way you can remove it easily if need be. I'm grabbing this out of the side of my broken classy anti-seize tube. Nothing but the best. I'll go ahead and slide that on that portion. And then you can slide that right into the bumper. Just like that. And then there's going to be a large three quarter inch grade eight bolt and washer. I would also put some anti-seize on this. And then we're going to fish this bolt up from the bottom on the inside. You may have to pick the spindle up to get the bolt started. We can just leave that snug for now. Once you get that bolt installed in there, you can go ahead and tighten it down with a one and an eighth inch end wrench. Uh, I don't really have a torque for you here. It'd be pretty impossible to get a torque wrench, but tight is fine. As long as this bolt doesn't go out, it's not gonna go anywhere. All this is doing is holding that spindle down into the sleeve. The sleeve itself is what supports the weight. Now we got to put some grease in these bearings and it really doesn't matter what grease you use, anything you find around the house. Uh, these have no real high load on them, but they do need to be greased. So the best way to do this is to put some grease in your hand. You could wear a glove if you were smarter than I am. And you're going to take this bearing, the edge of this bearing, and you're going to pull it through the grease while you turn the bearing. You're basically pulling, I'll come to the camera, you're basically pulling the edge of the cage of the bearing through the grease and you're looking for it to pop up on the other side. So you can see it right there coming up on the needles. You're just forcing that grease all the way around. Until you see grease on the needles. So there's one, this will make a mess. It's fine. And as long as you keep the cap on the tire carrier spindle and the seal on the bottom stays good, you should never need to grease these again. All right, and then while your hands are a mess, go ahead and take the seal and wipe some grease on the lip of that. as well. And then you can clean this mess of grease off your hands. All right, now we gotta assemble uh, this portion of the tire carrier. So we're gonna flip it upside down. And the first thing we're gonna grab is a bearing, one of the bearings that we greased earlier. So that's gonna go inside of there first. Then we're gonna grab the seal that we put some grease on. And you're gonna wanna put this seal in. There's a rubber dust lip that protrudes. That's gonna go up in this instance, or when the uh, carrier goes in the bumper, it should be down. So as we're assembling this carrier upside down, it's going to face up. But as when the carrier goes in the bumper, it'll face down. So 
Now you can take a, um, a small punch or a small flat blade screwdriver and hit this in just by tapping all the way around the circumference of that seal. Or you can grab a big socket or a big piece of tube if you have it and do the same thing all at once. This is a uh, Dana 60 hub socket. So you probably don't have that, but a screwdriver or a punch will work. Also, it takes, just takes a little more time. And just go ahead and hammer that seal down. You don't have to go crazy with it, um, but just enough, so probably so the lip of that seal is flush with the bottom of the sleeve. So the rubber lip should be just about flush with the bottom of the sleeve. If you go too far, you can hammer it back just a little bit using the bearing from the opposite side. Now once we get that seal on there, we're gonna go ahead and just flip this over and you can slide it over the spindle that you installed in the bumper. Maybe a little finicky while you seat that lower bearing there. Once that is done, you can grab the upper bearing that you greased. Oh, by the way, these bearings are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you put where. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Grab the upper one that you greased. Grab this big washer here and this big nut. Grease all over my hands. And then for now, just go ahead and snug this nut down. This uses a one and a half inch socket, or if you don't have that, you can carefully use an adjustable wrench, but make sure that you're not touching the threads of the sleeve with your adjustable wrench while you're tightening it. Because if you screw those threads up, you're going to have a bad time getting the cap on. Now that you have that snug, you can grab one and a half inch socket, or like I said, very, very carefully with an adjustable wrench. And you can just tighten that down. Just kind of snug. You don't really want any play in the bearings at all, but you don't want it so tight that you're putting a bunch of unneeded stress on the bearings as well. So you just want it just about like that. So a little bit of a push will move it, but it's not dragging too bad. And you can always, after you get weight on it, you may have to come back in here and retighten this. Once you get a tire or whatever else you're going to put on this swing. Um, but that's that. Okay, next we're going to put on this aluminum cap that we make here with our little bomb proof logo on there, a bomb proof spindle. You're going to want to make sure that you use anti-seize here. It's very important. This is aluminum, that's steel. They will corrode together. So I'm going <laughs> to use the last little bit out of my anti-seize that's on its last legs. Gross. I'm going to get anti-seize everywhere and just put it on my hands. So just coat these threads with anti-seize and that way you won't have any issue taking this apart later. Okay, 45 minutes later, the anti-seize is off my hands. We're going to hand thread this on as far as we can go just to make sure that we are threaded properly. If you cross for this, you're going to have a mess. And then we provide this handy wrench for you to tighten down this cap. There is an O-ring on here, so you don't have to go crazy with it. Snug is fine, and just keep this wrench handy if you ever want to remove it. Now we're gonna open this carrier all the way like that so we can install the stainless steel track. And this is just for the pin, the stay open pin to slide on so it doesn't slide on your finish and ruin your powder coat. So we're going to give you some little quarter inch flush, uh, what do you want to call these, countersunk, quarter inch countersunk bolts, one there and one there, um, and then some quarter inch flange nuts. So one flange nut goes on the outside here, that's pretty simple to get to. And the other one, you're going to have to contort your hand up inside of here to get to that one. But it's not, it's not terrible. And then 5 30 seconds is what you're going to use to tighten that one down. Now we're going to put this plunger in. And I like to add some grease to this first. Um, this isn't sealed by any means. So if you live in a, a wet climate, you want to keep up on the grease on this. I'm going to use a little bit of waterproof marine grease on this and that way 
we can keep rust away. Um, you can use anti-seize on this too. I just like the way grease lasts on it. And like I said, if you live somewhere with a lot of moisture, salt on the road, you want to do this pretty frequently or this will kind of rust up in there and you don't, you don't want that. I'm actually going to put a little more grease in here. You can use whatever you have, but this waterproof grease seems to work really well. Then there's a knurl on there you can grab with a pair of pliers or channel locks. You don't have to go crazy. Just snug that up like that. A word on what this little drop pin is for. This pin is meant to hold the carrier open so that it doesn't close by itself on a hill or whatever. It is not meant as a stop. So what we don't want you to do is that because what that can do is it can shear the pin first of all. And if the pin doesn't grab for some reason, it'll let that carrier swing all the way open and your tire can hit the corner of your forerunner and you just don't want that. So we want to only rely on this pin to work as a stop. So, so open the carrier by yourself and let that pin drop in. And if it doesn't drop in, uh, pull it open, clean it up, and re-grease it. But that is what the pin is meant for. Now we're going to install this bump stop bracket here, and that has two little rubber bumpers. These can kind of be a bear to get in these holes sometimes, so a little spray of WD-40 on them helps. Uh, you could also use a screwdriver to push them in, but usually if you spray them with a lubricant and then push them in, they should go just fine, or twist them in. Sometimes that works also. All right, now that we have this bracket well lubricated and our hands well lubricated with WD-40, we're going to go ahead and install it. We're going to do that with these button head bolts here. There's three of them with three flange nuts, serrated flange nuts. So we can start by hanging it on with two of those bolts and we can loosely put two of these flange nuts on the back. And then one of these bolts goes from the bottom with a flange nut. We can finger tighten all of those. Now you may be able to just hold on to the flange nut and tighten these down, but if you find that flange nut is spinning like on this one, just grab a 9 16th end wrench or socket and hold on to the flange nut from the back. You're gonna want these pretty tight. This uh, whole mechanism holds your latch on, so if you have some red Loctite, you can use that here as well. Okay, now we're going to bolt on this latch here, and we're going to give you some stainless steel quarter inch bolts, button head bolts, and flange nuts for that, four of them. And there's some adjustability in this bracket, so I'll show you how that works in a minute. So just bolt it on loosely right now, and I will show you how to adjust it. Once you get that loosely installed, you want to adjust it so that the foot here is contacting the nut. So you need to have the majority of this foot contacting on that nut and then uh, you just test it like that. If that's all good, go ahead and tighten everything down with a 5 30 seconds hex wrench or hex socket. Now we're going to put the carrier side of the tire mount on and there's lots of options on here for where you want to put this for your needs. You can put it up higher for more clearance. You can put it up or put it lower for a better sight line through the rear window. It's just kind of up to you. We're going to put ours right here in this spot for right now. We're going to give you some half inch hardware, this hex head hardware with flange nuts. So you're going to use those to tighten this down. And then these are going to tighten down with a three quarter inch end wrench and socket or a 19 will work too if that's what you got. Now we're going to install the studs in the tire carrier portion of this bracket. There's a multitude of patterns on this one. On the Toyota, you're going to use, usually, uh, the inner three, but go ahead and check this on your spare tire to make sure. And what you're going to do is take the wheel stud and push it through the back of the plate. And then we're going to put some washers here, two or three washers on the opposite side. Sorry, I'm back. And then uh, take a lug nut and put it on backwards so the face of the lug nut is against those washers. 
Now with an impact or by clamping this in a vise and using a large ratchet, we are gonna pull this stud through the plate. And I'll leave it here on this angle to show you how it works. Now with an impact and a 13 16 socket, I will go ahead and just pull that stud through the steel. You want to do it till the stud is flush with the back of the plate. Now that we've pressed all three of those wheel studs through, we're going to loosely bolt this on to the carrier portion. And we're going to do that with these carriage bolts, these half inch carriage bolts, one on each side. They slide through the carrier portion first and then through this mount. You probably can't see that, so I'll show you on the other side here. And then they get a flange nut underneath and we're going to leave these loose right now because we still have to space this out so we want the back of our tire to sit right here so we'll have to measure that backspace before we tighten this down now to measure the backspace you're going to need including the tire we'll grab uh, either a broom handle or a level set it across the tread of the tire on the back with the front facing down then grab your ruler and just go ahead and measure right up to the bottom of that straight edge. So we're right around five and five eighths. So we'll set it at five and a half and that'll give us kind of an eighth of squeeze once we put it on there and I'll secure that tire a little better. Now if you're installing our camera and license plate relocation bracket, you're gonna wanna put this portion of that bracket on there first. So that just slides over there and it's multi-pattern, it's designed for a lot of different bolt patterns, but that goes first and then we'll mount the tire on. All right, now go ahead and slide your tire over the studs and install three of the half inch 20 lug nuts. All right, so after you get that tire tightened down, you wanna check and make sure that it's pressing against the tire carrier here and that just adds a little bit of stability. All right, I think that's it. Go ahead and check all of the bolts for torque on your carrier and on the bumper itself, and then wire those lights in however you like. If you're installing our license plate and camera relocation bracket, check out the video for that on its product page. And if you have any questions about this product or any product at Victory 4x4, feel free to give us a call, 269-459-8447, or email us, info at victory4x4.com. Thanks for becoming part of the Victory 4x4 family. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.